Bracket the Yahweh, Bracket the Yahweh Shai, Bracket the Yahweh, Bracket the Yahweh Shai, Bracket the Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baha, Baka, Kodash, double honors to the elders and apostles with great millstone of Ruel. I am not a member, yet I have entered into their labors. Peace, mercy, and blessings to sincere, sincere brothers and sisters doing this, wherever you are, whatever your lot may be. Um, back at you yet again, I think for the third time. With a, uh, this is a quick strike. Should be, you know, if the spirit allows it. If not, then hey, we're just going to keep pushing and rolling. But I speak a lot about um, how good of an idea it is to be doing your best to follow the law. And I also state that the law cannot save you, but it is um, uh, a good uh, reference point, a parameter of, you know, if you're conducting yourself properly. So, I thought I'd add a little balance and go into Galatians five. Um, I have some couple. I have a couple of portions highlighted. I also um, can bring it up in the NLT as well. And uh, damn, come on. Yeah, so I'll bring it up in here as well, and then that'll be the video. But just so we can get some understanding. Those of us who may not know. Damn. Okay. How about this? Devil. <laughs> All right. So it's freedom in Yahweh Shai, it says. So Mashiach has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and do not get tied up again in slavery to the law. So you'll hear Christians use this as an occasion to the flesh, right? And Paul says not to do that as well. Or you'll hear them say, well, I can do this and I can do that because we're not under the law, we're under grace. But at the same time, they'll say something is a sin or they'll, they'll, in, they'll keep tithing intact, right? So if something is a sin, how do you judge what is a sin and what's not right what is a sin is transgression of the law so when paul says this this means that we are to live like yahweh like don't depend on the law to save you yahweh shy did everything perfectly and he was a perfect sacrifice remember john said behold the lamb john the baptist said behold the lamb right Yahweh Shai was that perfect sacrifice. He did everything correctly according to the law. So if we walk in his footsteps and we fall short from trying, we fall short from trying, that grace is what covers you. All right, verse two. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you are counting on circumcision to make you right with Yahweh, then Hamashiach, would be of no benefit and woe unto you that make that try to make void Yahweh Shai's sacrifice well you can't you can't void it but you can you know damn yourself you you ain't hurting nobody but yourself by doing that um I'll say it again if you are trying to find favor with Yahweh by being circumcised or by 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 um perfecting the law Okay, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. If you are trying to make yourselves right with Yahweh by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Yahweh uh, Shai. And remember, nobody comes unto the Father but the Son, I believe. And I don't remember exactly where that's at. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's it right there. So that's John 14 and 16. And where's KJV? Yahweh Shai said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Why? Because he's that mediator, which has always been. From Aaron and his son, or before that, Melchizedek, and then from, to Aaron and his sons. Um, 
up until Yahweh Shai coming. Let's see. Do we want to stay in the NLT? We'll, we'll switch back and forth. Cause it, that, and that's also like a good training tool. Because that's what I like to do when I read. We'll switch back and forth. Let's see. Um, I want to get straight to a couple of points. Uh, okay, yeah, let's get, um, here we go. That's too far. It's in this, let me see, I would even cut off trouble you. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. So this is verse 13. But by love, serve one another. And what is love is what I'm asking. How do you determine what love is? And how do you determine if you're in the spirit or not? So let's get it. Let's, let's see what it says in the NLT. We're on 13. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Why? Because this flesh wants that. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, right? That's what the spirit, that's what the flesh wants, is for you to serve your own belly. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up uh, in this command. Love your neighbor as yourself. And you also... Christians pull that neighbor, the neighbor stuff like the person who lives next door to you. Your neighbor is your fellow Israelite. More importantly, a fellow Israelite who is in the truth, who calls on the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and is in that proper spirit. That is who your neighbor is. And how do you prove you love somebody? There has to be a certain standard by which you say, hey, I love you. Okay, how can I prove that I love you? Action. The same way you prove you love the Lord by fearing and obeying him. And his commandments are written through the Bible. So it's like instead of you having to tread through uh, six feet of snow, Yahweh Shai walked that six feet of snow and cleared a path for us. And we should stay right in those footsteps and walk that path. You veer off, you're buried in the snow. So if you stay on that path and you may stumble and fall, but you still were on the path, you can see it clearly. Now, if you stumble and fall and you get up and you turn to the right or to the left, you've lost your way. You're buried in snow. You can't see where you're going. And again, you follow that path, that track that Yahweh Shai laid out. Even if you fall, you can still get back up and walk straight forward into where you need to be going. And that is the beauty of his sacrifice. And we don't talk about it enough. Because without Yahweh Shai, okay, let me read. Let's let, okay, for the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are, all, are always biting and devouring one another, watch out, beware of destroying one another. So what I wanted to say so we have, we got, we're going into 16 real quick, living by the Spirit's power. Um, without Yahweh Shai coming and we would still be judged by the letter of the law, how are you going to do daily sacrifices? Which you ain't supposed to be doing that. There were things, there were very specific things that were, had to be done in the temple. Uh, you had your, your free will offering, right? There's all kind of stuff, very detailed intricacies. That cannot be done. That's like asking a prisoner to <laughs> to uh, exercise whatever he could in the free world. You're not sovereign. So the importance of Yahweh Shai just isn't um, isn't something that could be put into words. You can try to explain it, but to fully grasp how important our Savior is, there's no way to put it in words. Because we'd all just be in perpetual captivity. We would continue to go off. And we we continue to piss Yahweh off. <laughs> and we'd just be perpetually under the rule of dogs. Or being less than a dog. Alright, verse 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide you. And remember, Yahweh Shai sent that. I send one down to you. I send a comforter. I don't think you can do a... a damn, I didn't mean to do that. 
I don't think you can do a search tool in here. But he says, I send you a comforter. I want to get that real quick. Oh, I didn't know that was that many times. But we need, boom, John twice in John 14. Okay, um, let's go to John 14 and 16, and it also has it in 26. We'll just read it from here. All right, and I will pray the Father... And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And that was John 14 and 16. You know what? What's the next one? 15 and 26. Let's go to John 14. 14 and 16. All right. So we know verily, verily, we'll start at 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also in greater works then these shall he do because I go unto my father. So that's your Hawashai um, going, uh, ascending up into the father and leaving the rest to his disciples, right? And those of us that believe on him, if we're fast forwarding up until now, those of us who believe in him, and how do you express your love and belief and faith? Through obedience. And you already have your parameters and your rules and your regulations and your law, statutes and commandments, they're all laid out, okay? Verily, verily, I say unto, oh, but, uh, 13, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So this is just another account of the importance of Yahweh Shai, because you can't go straight to the Father, and by glorifying him, you glorify the Father. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. And call Allah Yahweh Bashim Yahweh that we know him, and he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. All right, working through that spirit, and we'll go up to four, uh, 26. But the comforter which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. All right, so that's another powerful tool we have. Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, and him sending that, 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 uh, the, um, the Holy Spirit down. So without Yahweh Shai doing his sacrifice, he couldn't go back up to the Father and mediate. And then he can't send this. If he ain't up there to send the spirit down, what are we doing? Again, we're in perpetual captivity. Well, we would be perpetual captivity, but the Lord ain't right it that way. Let's go back to Galatians or 15 and 26. I wanted to see what that says about it. Um. 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, right? Okay. Um, let's see. But the, but this comes to pass. Okay, we'll start at 24. 20, 23, because that goes with it. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among the works, among them the works which none other man did, they had not, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. All right. Um, but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. And those who came, who saw Yahweh Shai, saw the works that they did, that he did, and they still denied him, that had to be, that that had to come to pass. It was written. So all of these bad things that have, that have been written and that haven't come to pass yet are going to come. And did I say haven't been written? That have been written, that haven't come to pass, that's got to come. Luckily, we got the playbook. We know what's coming. It ain't going to take us. It ain't going to hit us like a thief in the night. And on the flip, 
All the good and beautiful and wonderful things that have yet to happen are going to happen. You know, that's all we need to be praying to Yahweh Shai so he can, uh, 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 whatever we ask in the name of the Father, he's going to do, right? All right, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. Okay, so that really wasn't, um, really didn't fall in line with what I wanted, but that's cool. Ain't nothing wrong with reading the scriptures anyway, right? Now let's go back. We'll get it in the NLT, Galatians 5 and 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature crave. And how do you get the Holy Spirit? You walk in the steps of Yahweh Shai, who was perfect in the law. And the gift is that you get the Spirit. And that Spirit gives you the gift of freedom of not having to be held down to the letter of the law. Does that mean you don't try to follow it? No. Remember the analogy of walking in the snow. You get up and you continue to walk in his footsteps because he ordered that track. He ordered your steps. He showed you where to go. So walk it. All right. The sinful nature will wants to do evil. Right. And that's how you can tell when you're in the flesh and when you're in the spirit, according to the law. If you were in this flesh, you can see you'd be breaking all kinds of laws. If you were in the spirit, something would tell you, no, nah, I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. No, nah, you know what? I'm chilling. I ain't going to go there tonight. No, nah, I ain't going to do this. Hey, you got a husband and you, are you talking to me? Uh, I ain't with that. Go on, you know, bye. Good day. Piss off. Verse 17, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. So there is a constant tug of war between the spirit and the flesh. And you have to fight that flesh. But that is the battle that we have to fight right now while we're in these bodies. Because once that new covenant comes, once Yahweh Shai comes and people, you know, we are translated, no longer do we have to fight. Everything that's in the spirit will be written. All the laws, statutes, commandments, everything that the Spirit um, is providing right now won't have a hindrance. The flesh won't be a hindrance to it. Okay, let's give us uh, Spirit once. Let's see. All right, and we're 17, the other half of 17. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, like I just said. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. So it basically what it's saying <laughs> is, well, OK, how about we read when you follow the desire of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. OK, lays it out. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarrelings, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. See, so that spirit is a key. And that key unlocks what you need to know. Gives you that cheat sheet. It unlocks the door. And behind that door is everything you need to know. Pertaining to your salvation. Everything that you need to know. Because, you know, later on, when Yahushua, after Yahushua comes, I'm sure he will reveal many, many more things unto us that we never even thought would exist. But we just got to wait on that. Right now, we need what's pertaining to salvation to get up out of here. Let's see, but the Holy Spirit, okay, verse 22, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's a good one. There is no law against these things. Do you see? Do you understand? See? All right, there, and that's what he's saying. There's laws against the things that are of the flesh, but there are no laws against the things of the spirit. So walking by the spirit, by default, you're fulfilling to the best of your abilities, of course. And whatever you fall short of, boom, 
Yahweh Shai has got his hand out, ready to pick you up and tell you to keep walking the course that he already laid out. Very beautiful thing to have. Don't take it for granted. Take advantage of it. If you've been given a spirit and you can see these things clearly, you know what? <laughs> Damn, I thought it would have been. All right, cool. Yeah, but if you can see these things clearly, man, that is a blessing. A priceless blessing, blessing, blessing. It's priceless. There's no amount of money that can match what you have because everything seems cool right now. But when it ain't, it ain't gonna be. Once it once the volume's turned up, ain't no turning it back down. Damn, can't tight. That's all I was looking for. It was an Isaiah. Okay. So that's the last thing. Did I just get it? Let me see. Isaiah 30. And 21. Yep, right here. I did have it. Okay. So we're going to end it off right here. So the point, the biggest point of this uh, was the analogy I gave about the snow. Yahweh Shai treading that track and opening up a walkway for you. You turn to the right, you're lost. You turn to the left, you're lost. You go back, <laughs> the track's already covered. And so you still lost. There's only one direction to walk, and it's following Yahweh Shai straight forward. And that's why it says if it, 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 we uh, follow the Lamb whithersoever he go. And it's going to take you through some shit. Like, you're going to see some stuff, and you gonna, it's going to be some rough terrain here and there. We all going to see something. So anybody... Christians still preaching that, oh, I'm going to give you a word today. The, the, what, what you was waiting on, the, the, the house you wanted to get, the Lord's going to give it to you in 2022. The Lord's going to do the, if, look, liar, false prophet. This is the year where things are going to turn up. And I'm not saying the Lord ain't going to bless or whatever. That's your own walk. But what they should be talking about is what's coming. This devil has all kind of infrastructure set up, all kind of technology. He got his uh his his uh his chip stuff. The chip is 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 pushing and there's many different companies that are manufacturing these things. Um you got the wars and the rumors of wars and things are getting heated and you all it's so many prophecies popping off that if you're reading your word, if you're reading the Bible, you can see what's coming next. How soon? Don't know, but it's coming next. All right, so let's end it right here. Um, 21. Isaiah 30 and 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left, ye shall defile also the covering of thy great... All right, now that's all I wanted. Never mind. Hold on. End it right there. That first one, that first part, 21. Your ear shall hear a word behind thee, or thine ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way walk ye in it. So that's what we need to be doing. All right. Don't get lost in the snowstorm or the, or the one that's a storm that's coming. Walking in it. Shall